Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we have something different than usual. This is a frame and it's called the ZD550. Now it's a 550 millimeter wheelbase quadcopter that can take 10 to 15 inch prop, which is really nice. Now, this is not for X-Class. You can use it for X-Class, but I wouldn't recommend it in my opinion. This is meant for some kind of a camera setup or like a gimbal setup with, for example, like a Terret. So if you want to do your, basically your own DIY camera drone, this is the type of frame you would be going for. Now, I've gone through three other frames, which I never built because I really didn't like them. And uh, you've probably seen them on the channel, never continued with them. But this one seems like the winner because the overall hardware they provide you with was very great quality from the screws to the way the arms are actually mounted. And the arms are foldable, believe it or not. Now I was afraid of this. Uh, I said, okay, I'll set this up, see if it's any good. If it's any good, then I'll probably show everybody about it. So it turns out it's really good. Uh, the, the arm mechanism here. Now I actually received this two months ago, but I didn't build it because there's no instruction manual and you have to build this arm uh, mechanism here which holds it and it actually folds the arms back as you can tell it's really difficult to show you so this is the arm folded down so you could take so you can basically transport it a lot easier and then you just you know boom and the locking and the way that it's holding it's absolutely phenomenal they're using I think around four millimeter aluminum uh, for this and aluminum is a good aluminum I can tell you it's it's possibly 70 75 aluminum because uh, I did have to use screws into them to hold them into place and I screwed the living crap out of them and they didn't strip so that's a huge plus so that's when I knew the aluminum that they're using is good and we're not going to be expecting anything to go bad anytime soon hopefully now as you can tell we do have two springs in here I'll show you a close-up later on you'll see while I'm building it how this actually works I'll show you how to build these arms towards it towards the end of the video now overall I would give this kit I would say uh, Eight and a half out of ten in my opinion I've gone through two other kits which I decided never to build I kind of already got started on them but then I just abandoned because just the quality was absolutely terrible the motor would get misaligned easily uh, the whole all of the mounting setup on it was really flimsy and I would say unreliable and I was very much afraid to use it and just causing myself a headache however on the on the other hand this one um, is the best kit I've gotten so far for a DIY camera drone and again, this is a 12 inch to 15 inch propeller drone here. And you could even make it bigger if you wanted to. Just get different longer carbon fiber tubes and just stick them into place and mount them in. The mounting solutions they have set up, the tolerance is absolutely phenomenal. I didn't have any issues or any hiccups. The only big problem they have is they don't install, give you the instruction manual. That's the biggest problem here. But after you figure out how to do the arms, then everything else is just a couple screws. What's really nice is they only have two types of screws, long ones and small ones. That's it, which makes it really easy. But to figure this orientation, how to set this up was a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, but you'll see how to set that up towards the end of the video. Other than that, everything else is pretty self-explanatory. And um, it's just, it was, a, it was a really fun little project, I would say, to build. I wish I had the instruction manual, it would have been a little bit quicker. But overall, the overall structural integrity looks good. It's something that I would personally use. I'm not scared to put my gimbal on it and risk breaking it. It seems like it's going to handle very nicely. And uh, time will tell here. I'm waiting up for motors now. I'm waiting for some motors. The current motors I have are 22, 12, 800 kV. But these are motors very, that are very old and they're, they don't make them anymore. And I just found them with one of the older kits that I had. So I just decided to put them on just right now for show and see how well everything stacks up. And I might build it with these motors first until I order some that are currently in the market because I want to start searching for the highest efficiency camera drone, which means how can we get the most amount of flight time, what motor uh, propeller combos we should use, what batteries are good, what's the maximum size we can push this thing, these types of things, because there isn't really, there isn't really much online, and I get this question so much in my email box, and I've always said, okay, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, and that's why I got the other two kits, which are not really that great. However, this one is going to be the main tester on the channel. It'll be testing gimbals, testing cameras, and um, some other things as well. I don't know what just yet, but it's gonna be like a propeller tester, motor tester, and these types of things because it's a very sturdy platform, and uh, I'll be building it soon, and I will have the build video step by step. I'm not gonna build this in one day. Uh, I'll do the ESC routing maybe one day, and then connecting everything to the flight controller another day, and then the GPS receivers, and you know, I'm gonna have to design 3D print stuff uh, to mount the 30 by 30 stacks and um, 
VTX and I want to make it really nice and proper and very modular so because it's going to be uh, the rig to be testing a lot of things on the channel here and also have to design a piece for the gimbal now it does have a landing gear now I took it off because you know I've, I've never had to deal with such a big drone on the table here these are the landing gears they're all carbon fiber they're really good a lot sturdier and a lot more uh, durable than the previous ones I've had but yeah just be careful with these because I have a bad habit of breaking these I've just keep forgetting like the quads next to me I just step on it um, even though it's big I just basically bump into it I haven't had that happen with this one and the way they mount it was four screws right here as you can tell right there four screws here and four screws there and um, below this you get a battery tray which is like this uh, you can make it smaller just use smaller standoffs everything is um they're not using a lot of proprietary hardware which is really nice so if you miss if you lose something you can easily find it other than the uh, springs and these little uh, connectors here which you'll see towards the end of the video with me connecting um, which are these here for the arms uh, but they do provide you with some they do provide you with some spares and I don't know where I put the spare bag oh here it is so they do provide you with spares as you can tell right here so you're gonna be fine if you screw up a couple springs they, they give you an extra one two three four some more handles and just one more set of the internals of one arm because uh, this is what's the, the only things that are proprietary here so they give you extras of those which is really nice other than that I would definitely recommend this kit I would give it an eight and a half out of ten compared to the other ones that I've gotten which were below 100 bucks this is by far one of the best frames I haven't seen many frames but under 100 bucks I don't think you can go wrong with this um, if it was 100 bucks, I'd still possibly say it's worth it because the overall structural integrity and the hardware they give you is not shitty plastic stuff. Even the screws that they provide you with is really good screws. So that, that's also a very big telltale sign that they didn't go cheap on you. And the tolerances between the cuts and how everything is cut here is really good. But the one big kind of downside it's not really a downside it's the structural integrity of the middle body here. Now the arms, I mean it's, de it's, it's good but it can be better. And what I'd recommend doing is adding some sort of just standoffs in the middle here to increase the overall structural integrity. It's still really good here. So in that perspective, I mean, it's, it's a really nice kit for 80 bucks and you can't go wrong with this in my opinion. Uh, I'll be flying this one once I build it and it's going to be very interesting. I think I'll fly it first before the camera, but it's going to need a lot of 3D printed parts, which I'll have right on Thingiverse. So if you don't follow me, just look up Drone Mesh on Thingiverse. Usually I upload my things there before they ever get released, so you can keep track if you're interested in this or interested in some other things as well. I do design a couple things and I put them up every once in a while. So you can go ahead and check that out. And well, that's it guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll have a link to this down below. I'll also have a link to the turret down below and the motors that I picked up also down below for this. Um, I'll be picking up more motors and again, I'll be testing more things as time goes on. And these are currently 10 inch propellers. This thing takes 15 inch propellers, but I don't have any 15 inch propellers. All I have is 10, so I'm gonna have to pick up some 12 and 15 inch props. Uh, so when we get testing, but good thing I already have 10 inch at least. Uh, so it's going to make for a pretty interesting time. I have no idea what to expect. This is my first big... Actually, this is not my first build. This will be actually the first build of this nature that I'll actually fly. Um, and yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting. And I'm going to leave it at that, guys. So make sure you check the links out down below. Those greatly support the channel. And also, do you have a Patreon? If you can support me there, that would be absolutely awesome. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys. Alright guys, so I just want to show you here how to install the most complicated part, which is the arms here and the lock. Now, when I first saw this and how they were doing it and putting it together, I was like, there's no way in hell this would be very good for a quad. But actually, I was really wrong. This is really sturdy and it's really nice engineering here. So the way this works is once it's on the quad like this, you can pull these back and you can drop the arms down because the arms will be connected in here. So I'm going to show you how to go ahead and uh, set this up. So first thing what you want to do is you want to get these little H style aluminum brackets here. And then you want to put, you get these little brass ones and you want to put the spring right into that little part right here. Now that is a pain in the ass to install right there. But once you do those two together, then you could put them in like this. One will go up here and then one will go down here. There's, you know, there's a hole and then there's this whole sliding thing. And then you get these little screws and i recommend next thing is you screw this side up now this is not going anywhere it's going to stay like this which is really good so next thing you want to take note of this little ridge here you see how here it's like a 
of upside down V or something. But you see the ridge here? It's like a staircase. You want to keep that facing up here. And once you do that, then you want to grab this one, the next one over. And if you take a closer look, you have this little uh, indentation right here. And what you want to do is you want to grab, push that away and then have this one slide in so it's flush. And then it'll be sideways. And then you do the same thing to the other side. And that is what will allow it to just like that, do that. But there's also a little metal piece. So let's just not get too far ahead. So we put this here and we push that one off so it can be by this ridge here. So we use that ridge to push it off, make sure this one goes in flush here. And we get the other side now. And we also do the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and see it. It's the same way also. Just I'm going to move back here. I'm going to push that and then put it into that first hole just like that. And now I'm going to line them up, make sure everything's lined up nicely. Now everything is lined up nicely here. As you can tell, this will fall off right now, but don't worry. So these will go on the outer side. So the next step you want to do is you want to grab this little metal thing here. And this is what's going to uh, apply the structural integrity when it's locked into place. How about I recommend you just putting it a little bit before. There we go. Hold on. It's a little bit fiddly, but uh, if you get it, it'll just work just fine. There we go. So I'm putting that in right there and then I'm just going to line those two up and then pull this one back here so they can both go in. There we go. Now everything is in here. As you can tell, this is on the outside pushed away. It's at the, uh, the springs are, are tensioned back here. You have to pull them back. See, and yeah, there we go. And now that's not holding anything into place. So you want to grab the little screws that come with it and you want to ins install them into the brass. You're not going to put anything into the uh, metal one right there. So just so we can do this and you don't expect to tighten them all the way. These are just to hold it into place here. So we're just going to just tighten this part in. Uh, the reason why I decided to show this part, because it was, it took me about 45 minutes to figure it out, constantly putting it together and undoing it and trying to go by the pictures because this thing does not come with instruction manuals. So, and the reason why I decided to make the video is because the locking mechanism is beautiful. I mean, it's really annoying to set up, but I didn't expect it's going to be this powerful to hold, to, to hold an arm this good. It's just quite remarkable here. I mean, there is no way in hell this is going anywhere. I mean, especially this whole design here. This is just beautiful. And it's really thick aluminum too, which is really nice. So now we're just going to drop this up just like this. Everything's loose because we're still not finished connecting everything. So that's fine. Now we get this side here. We have four screws or four holes and then we have four holes also. So all they all come with just one set of long screws. So it makes your life really easy. There's just two types of screws here. That's it. Just these and then these here. And this is pretty obvious. So what you want to do is you want to grab one of these here. These are these are plastic here, but that's fine. They'll have some kind of dampening effect on the arm because that's going to be connected on the arm. So we want to grab the first half and I'm going to slide it to that bottom one right here. So first I'm going to put a screw. I'm not going to put it all the way just so it can just hold it into place. I'm going to grab another screw and do the same thing. And the reason why I'm doing that is because when I come from the bring in the other piece here and slide it next to it, it'll be a lot easier. There we go. That's done. And then this one. Uh, sometimes you just got to play with it a little bit to get it to go into place. I find just screwing it in helps sometimes, just like this time. There we go. We got that side in. And now you can just push it in. Same thing to the upper one also, as you can tell. So I'm just going to, it's this one now, just the upper one. I like to do the bottom one first because obviously it'll be a lot easier uh, to put the top one. Because if we put the top one first and we go to the bottom one, then we're just going to have a nightmare. Okay, that went in beautifully. And this one also, same thing. We're just going to have to fight it a little bit. I'm just going to bring my screwdriver here. And then hopefully that'll find its place. Usually they do. Yep, there we go. Beautiful. And then they just give you nuts to tighten them in. I haven't tightened them up, tightened up the nuts just yet. On the other side, they are self-locking nuts, which is really nice. Or nylon nuts. I don't know what they're called. But they're good ones. That's for sure. Decent ones, at least we can say. I don't know. I haven't tested this. Uh, I do have motors for this, so it's going to be pretty interesting to just test out. I do want to do a complete uh, gimbal build because the other one that I have, I broke the landing gear. It was a piece of shit, to be honest. And this one just looks so rigid, so far at least, and so nice. And it has a lot of space. So there we go. So yeah, I wanted to show you guys this part here. Now, I don't know if while I'm building, if I still need to uh, show you something else. Look at this. This is, this is remarkable how 
how tight this is. I can't even pop it out from here. And then boom. So what you do is this would be on the quad. The arm would be stretched out here. If you wanted to put it away, you would pull these two back. And then you would slide this like this. And it'll lock right there. The arm's not going to be dangling anytime soon, which is really nice. And then you could just pull it back again. And it'll lock into place. Perfect. Because you have this metal bar here. And there's no way in hell this is this ha this has zero vibrations. I mean, zero play, which is really awesome. I didn't expect this, to be honest. They do provide you with spares. At least I currently think these are spares. I don't know uh, just yet. So I'm going to continue building the rest of it. If I see anything else that needs to be noted here. As you can tell, now I have four of... Uh, now I, I have all four of the arms here. So we're, we're going to be installing those. Uh, that should be pretty straightforward because... If you take a closer look, you have four holes here and four holes here, and that'll be connected to the body here on the edges, just like this, just like that. And then, yeah, just follow the pictures. Everything else, like, it'll tell you, you'll know which, which one's the upper. This is going to be the bottom plate, and this is going to be the top plate. Uh, that's what I just figured out from the pictures. And then, uh, so this is going to be in between like this. Since this is the upper plate, we want the arms to fold down. So that would be installed like this, and that would be the upper plate here. And these are going downwards. So, yeah, let me continue on and then uh, we'll take it from there. If there is a need to.